Hello, hello everyone. Um, welcome to your restorative practice. My name is Tessa. We're going to need wall space or a chair. Actually, I would say it this way. Wall space is optional. I'm gonna give you the option to start there, um, but I would like you to have a chair at the very least because that can be an alternative to the wall. So if you need to go grab a chair, this could also be like your couch or the edge of your bed or a stool. It doesn't have to actually be a chair. Um, and then all the other things that we normally use, like pillows and blankets, I'd like you to have those as well. Uh, and so here's the first option. Number one, if you're using that chair, you're just lying down on your back, draping your calves over the chair. So you can see how I have my chair turned sideways since the back of this chair wouldn't allow me to fully extend until my knees get to be in contact with the edge of the chair. And then at the wall, very similarly, we'll scoot our sit phones as close as we can. And rolling, oops, rolling on, and then bending the knees and just letting the thighs kind of rest on the belly. So either way, your knees are gonna be bent a lot or a little. In this variation, I am basically in child's pose upside down. If you're using the wall, you can, you can do that. So my feet are just resting on the wall. One other option I'll give you as you're on your back here starting out is to just take a something thin like a folded blanket and pad the back of your head. So I wouldn't recommend a pillow that tends to be too high, puts too much strain on the cervical spine, but something a little bit more flat that provides just a little bit of padding for the base of the skull. So we'll just take a few moments here to maybe close the eyes. Start to draw the awareness into the body, into the breath into the current place that you occupy. So if, you've, if you're at the wall and your knees are bent, if you'd like, you could extend your legs up kind of straighten out through the legs. You can always keep them a little bit bent too. Just an option. We'll spend about another minute or so in this first position with the feet above the heart, above the brain, offering a different perspective in the orientation of the body. Just noticing how this feels in your body. And in this first shape, it takes a bit to unwind. It takes a bit for parasympathetic response to kick in. So our ability to rest and digest, to be still, be in the present moment. Especially if you were busily going about your day. So just noticing that, that desire to want to move or fidget or the thought patterns really spinning out of control. This is a really normal reaction when you ask yourself to become still. Let's take three more breaths here.
So for our next few breath cycles, we're gonna come to hands and knees. If you're at the wall, just start to roll off to the side. Uh, if your legs are draped over the chair, start to release them. And then meet me on your mat, hands and knees. You can take a blanket, maybe if you're using a blanket underneath the back of your head and pad the knees here, that's probably gonna come in handy for the next few movements. And so tabletop, we'll just articulate the spine two rounds of cat-cow. Start to notice how the whole spine is feeling. So that includes the tailbone, that includes the neck. Check out the spine today. Good. I'll come back to a neutral spine and we'll, since we're all going to utilize this chair today, we'll take it forward so at least two um, legs of the chair are on your mat so it's not going to go anywhere when you put a little bit of weight on it. I'm going to turn it this way so that I can let my arms rest on it. And so we're going to come into a lunge. I'll take any leg forward. It doesn't matter which. We're going to do both. And maybe it's helpful to let that leg be a little bit wider. So you can see I have my foot on the outer edge of the chair leg. And then I'll bring my forearms or elbows down onto the chair. So take a peek at my back leg. It's pretty stretched out long. If you have something going on more like this, here's what I'd suggest. Curl your back toes under, lift the knee up, wiggle the foot back. Then set the knee back down so you have a nice long stance in that back leg. Hip flexors tend to be pretty tight if we spend most of our day in flexion, seated in a chair, driving in a car, things of that nature, tend to tighten up those hip flexors. So if this is a lot and you need to back out a little bit, you can always come back up to the hands and back, back up. The hips start to move a little bit back over that knee and then come forward when you're ready. You can also take it a little bit lower. You can come to the forearms. You can rest your head. It just depends on your range of motion. We're not forcing anything. We're meeting our body where it is. Keep the breath coming steady. Deep belly breath. About one more minute on this side. Keep relaxing your jaw, your shoulders, your neck. Take one more inhale here. If you're down on your forearms, your elbows walk back up to your hands and shift the legs. So actually shift the hips back over that back knee and straighten out through the front leg. Just kind of counteracting that deep low lunge. And then take that front leg knee back into place. And opposite foot comes forward to the outer edge of the chair. So it's a wider low lunge, wider stance. And then before we sink into this, notice what's going on with that back leg hip flexor. If it's looking more like a 90 degree angle of the hip over the knee with the back ankle, I want you to think about lengthening that back leg a little bit more. So maybe curl the toes under, lift the knee, wiggle the foot back a little bit, then set the knee down. 
And then you can come forward onto hands. You can come forward onto elbows or forearms. Start to settle in here. And I know this is an intense stretch. Believe me, I feel it too. We're in it together. Take care of yourself if you need to back out. Do your best to keep breathing slow and steady. Have about one more minute here. Check in with the breath. Check in with the tension in the body. Notice where that is. And if you're really gripping or adding tension, maybe that's a sign you need to back out a little bit. That's okay. Just learning to read the signals of the body. That's in essence what a yoga practice or yoga asana practice, that's what the aim is or the goal to know yourself. Okay, so if you're down on the forearms, walk back up to the hands. You start to shift some weight to that back knee and straighten out through the front leg. Take a few moments to breathe here. And then front knee back into its place. We'll set up for our next shape. We're gonna take, so we were working with thighs a lot, right? We're gonna take this to the inner thigh, the adductor. Um, and I'm gonna show you this from a couple of angles. So if you came with me and you practiced uh, vinyasa earlier this week, we did this shape in our flow, but we're gonna hold it today. So we're taking one leg out long, and we're bending one knee, sole of the foot to inner thigh. You can see I'm seated on a blanket. You could sit on a cushion, whatever is gonna allow you to sit up a little bit taller here to start to work with the pelvis and the hips a little bit more. And then my chair is in front of me because I can nice and gently lean forward maybe. So I'm not pressuring myself to come all the way to the ground in, in a deeper forward fold. I say that with quotes because deeper is relative to to you and your body. So chair here, great prop. If you're feeling tension on the inner knee joint, what I recommend is sliding a prop underneath the knee so it's a little bit bent. Maybe that's a pillow, maybe it's a folded blanket. I want to avoid stretching the knee joint itself. We're looking for sensation along the inner thigh. If the chair is too much, like if you start to settle into this and you realize maybe I could fold a little bit deeper, you can always slide that chair away, but it's there for you at the very beginning at least.
So always you're checking in with your breath, you're breathing nice and deep. About a minute more here. So if you came down to your forearms or to the floor, start to press back up into your hands, sit up nice and tall. Before we change our legs, we're going to counter twist over the bent knee leg. The hand of that same bent knee leg behind you like a little kickstand, you're just turning over the bent knee leg, sitting up nice and tall. And then turn the torso forward. So you notice with this shape, sometimes when we take um, this shape, uh, technically Janyu Shirshasana, which Janyu is knee, Shirsha is forehead, so it's like forehead to knee. Not the case here, we're folding straight forward. So we're not worried about how close our forehead gets to our knees. Just wanted to point that out in case you were folding over the straight leg. Let's just switch out the legs. Opposite leg goes long. Opposite knee bends in, so the foot to inner thigh. Maybe you're adding a little height underneath that straight leg knee. Pull your chair back towards you and just kind of assess here. It's always better to start off shallow. You can always allow yourself to go deeper. Start to settle in. I'd suggest looking for like if you can imagine your maximum range of motion in a particular shape, in your restorative practice, you're only looking for 40% of your maximum range of motion. So it's not very much. We're not looking for this huge, deep stretch sensation, although you might get there, but not at the expense of forcing your body. So it's a really nice, slow entrance. Allows the muscles to relax and not tense up and tighten. We have plenty of time here, so it's better to start off slow. And if you're feeling called to go deeper and you want to move that chair out of the way, you absolutely can. Just remember that you can back out if it becomes too intense in your deeper forward fold.
have about one more minute here. So we'll start to come back up, take your time. Sitting up nice and tall, we'll take that brief counter twist towards that bent knee leg. So the hand of that leg comes behind you, opposite hand to outer side. Just thinking about growing nice and tall here. I'm not worried about how far I'm twisting. I'm just sitting up nice and tall. Breathe into the lung, the rib cage. One more breath here. Good, all right, let's unwind. We'll take both legs out. You can shake them out if you want. And uh, work with the abductors a little bit, outer hips in a back body or a supine shape. And we'll head towards Savasana. So let's come down to our back. Knees bent, feet planted. And if you want, you can take that blanket if you're not using it behind the head. Something that's shallow. I wouldn't, again, I wouldn't recommend a pillow because it tends to um, extend the cervical spine a little too much. You still want your head, your ears, your shoulders relatively in line with the spine. Let's take figure four, right ankle on top of left thigh towards the knee. And first here, just start to rock that figure four side to side. You're rolling to the inner and outer edge of the left foot. And then notice how when you move that whole figure four off to your left, you probably start to feel that along a little bit of low back, QL, a little bit glutes. Come back through center. You can either pause here with that left foot on the floor, or you can hug the whole thing in towards your chest. So you're just compressing a little bit. I'm reaching through with my hands, interlace fingertips around that left shin bone or the left hamstring. Keeping the back of the head completely relaxed, shoulders heavy on the mat. Noticing that sensation along the outer right thigh. Couple more breaths here. And then we'll progress this figure four into a twist variation. So release that left foot back to the mat, keep your figure four shape. You're gonna rock that figure four shape off to your left. So you're rolling to the outer left leg. Roll the right foot either on the floor or you slide a prop underneath that foot like a blanket, block or a pillow so that the foot can rest. And something tangible. Anything you want with your arms, you can stretch them out wide, broaden across the chest. Good choice. See how much and where in your body you can soften and release any tension.
few more breaths here. Good, and let's start to bring the figure four back through center, release the right ankle. Take a moment, pause, adjust the hips you need to, and then take the left ankle on top of that right thigh towards the knee. Start to rock it side to side. You're just rolling to the inner and outer edge of the right foot and noticing how that feels across the whole hip region. Low back, glutes. Even the spine. Let's come back through center. We'll take figure four. So you, you can either stay right here in the starting position, or you can pull all of that in towards the chest by reaching the hands through, interlacing fingers around right hamstring or shin bone. If you're taking this option, keep relaxing your shoulders, your head. Soft grip. Let's release that foot back to the mat if you had taken that variation. And then we're going to rock all the way to the outer edge of the right leg. So you keep your figure four. You're just turning it off to the right side, adding any props underneath that left foot to let it rest on something tangible. Arrange your upper body, your arms into a comfortable position. And deep belly breaths here. Three more breath cycles. Slowly start to unwind. Release that left foot. Any last movement? If you want to take happy baby or apanasana, hugging the knees into the chest, or even moving back to the wall for your final position. Be sure that you'll be warm enough. I know it's a short shavasana technically for our purposes, but you can always stay longer if you have the time in your day. Please know that I highly encourage that. Wherever you are, relax your shoulders away from your ears. Slightly tilt your chin towards your chest. Take a big breath in through the nose. Open the mouth, exhale the air out. Imagine as if all the tension could leave your body with your exhale breath. Shavasana. You come to a place of peace, 
Please stay as long as you can. You need to move on with your day. Gentle movement to fingertips and toes. Head starts to shift side to side. Reaching your arms overhead, breathe into the length of the body. Passing through fetal position, you bend your knees and roll off to a side. Coming up to an upright seat, just briefly a moment to close out our practice. I invite you to join me in Anjali Mudra as an offering. Thumbs resting at the breastbone, chin bowing into the chest with reverence and gratitude for our practice. To all of our teachers, past, present, future, to the teacher within your own heart, namaste yogis. Well, I hope you're feeling good, and that was just the reset you needed to take you through the rest of your day. Take care of yourselves. Be well. Until next time.